Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our full review of the Nike AlphaFly 3. Alphafly 3 is obviously one of the big new carbon shoes that's going to be launched on January 4th next year. It's a shoe that's already been used by Elites this year, obviously, with uh, Kelvin Kipton setting the world marathon record in it. And it's going to cost £285 or $285 when it does launch next year in this proto colorway. It is the lightest Alphafly ever, with my UK size 9 weighing 220 grams or 7.7 .7 ounces. It has a stack height that hits 40 millimeters at the heel in line with World Athletics regulations, with an 8 millimeter drop down to 32 millimeters at the forefoot. So we've got a big drop in weight here compared to previous models of the Alphafly with the Alphafly 2 weighing just shy of 250 grams in my size and the uh, first version around 230 grams so it is the lightest Alphafly ever and you've also got a new continuous midsole on the shoe instead of the big cutout that almost separated the Zoom X foam and the Air Zoom pods at the front of the shoe on past models you've got now this continuous midsole with a big cutout on the bottom of the shoe to reduce weight but it runs down the center like a canyon rather than dividing up the shoe. Nike says this will create a smoother ride no matter where what your foot strike is. Obviously the foam used is Nike Zoom X foam, the bouncy P based foam that's been used in all their racing shoes since the original Vaporfly. And you've also got the air zoom pods under the forefoot of the shoe, which, like you say, give you a little bit more energy return than just having the Zoom X foam alone as you have in the Vaporfly. Obviously, you've got a full length carbon plate in there, Nike's Fly plate, and it's been widened a little on the medial side to try and increase stability. Nike says they've also redesigned the fit of the shoe to create less irritation around the arch which was a problem for some runners with previous models of the shoe now this wasn't a problem i've had so i can't really say if it's been improved in this shoe but i've certainly had no problems with it in terms of arch irritation got an atom knit 3.0 upper with new integrated eyelets on the laces and it's generally just a tweaked fit all round it's still got the booty style fit with pull tabs to help you get the shoe on a bit of structure around the heel though it's not quite i feel as built up as the alpha fly 2 was on that front a little bit of padding around the achilles there as well i've noticed that the rubber doesn't run quite as far up the fore of the shoe as it did on previous models of the Alpha. I know some runners would hit the front of that rubber with their toe when running, but yeah, it's now more just fabric at the front of the shoe you have here with the Alpha Fly 3. A fast shot rubber outsole. You've got quite a bit more coverage at the heel, just two little patches at the heel there, although these have held up pretty well compared to the little patches of rubber you have on the Vaporfly 3, which obviously did seem like not a very durable shoe in terms of the outsole coverage it has there. And then you've got better coverage on the forefoot with these orange patches underneath the air zoom pods and the shoe has actually been pretty good in terms of grip i've been running it in the winter here in the uk and i've actually found the grip to be pretty impressive and no signs of wear and tear at all i've only done uh, 65 kilometers in this shoe but but the vaporfly 3 outside did start to show some wear after you know about kind of 50k So I've had no concerns at all with the fit of the Alpha Fly 3. I find it a really comfortable shoe, actually. There's no lace pressure at all when you're lacing it up tight for racing. It holds the foot really nicely and securely. Like I've done runs with twisting courses, lots of fast running with turns and stuff like that, and I've had no problems at all with the fit. Good amount of room in the toe box in my usual running shoe size. It's the same size I've had for previous models of the Alpha Fly, all the models I've had really of any Nike shoe, and I find that the fit has been perfectly good for me in that size. The heel, it's got this kind of raised system, but it feels almost a bit softer and less irritating than and the heel design of the Vaporfly find with that thin strap of foam as someone who's been having some heel irritation throughout the year and Achilles irritation found that the Alpha Fly has been quite soft and you know, accommodating for that so all around yeah the fit's been really good for me in my normal running shoe size. So I've done 65k in the Alpha Fly 3 since it landed uh, earlier in December and I've used it for two races so far. I've done a 5k and a 10k in it and I've done three hard training runs including a uh, steady 10k at around marathon pace which we showed in the first run video and I've also done a hard session running k reps at the track alternating 320 and 310 per k rep so it's almost around my kind of 10k 5k speed and then a hard session on the roads where I was doing 3k uh, in 10 minutes with five short hill reps afterwards and I did that twice and I've Pretty much loved every step in the shoe. I think it, I think it is really fantastic. Like I've had very high expectations for the Alphafly three on paper. It looks absolutely phenomenal, and it has met those expectations. I know the Alphafly two wasn't to everyone's taste. I really like the Alphafly two. Very bouncy shoe, like a kind of shoe that looks off putting, feels too heavy, but then you go and run in it, and I race in it, and it feels amazing. I did found anyway. I ran a really good marathon in that shoe, ran short distance races, but I feel like this is a shoe that won't split opinion. In that I think most runners are going to love this shoe. It really is spot on for what 
people say they want or do want and it just performs so well when you're running fast the new continuous midsole does create a smoother ride it is a more aggressive feel you get a little bit more of a tippy forward feeling which is more akin to the vaporfly than actually maybe the feel of the alpha flies in the past and it goes into that firmer forefoot than the vaporfly with those air zoom pods just get that little bit more punch from it and it feels lighter much more nimble than the previous version of the shoe like when i was doing hill reps or running into wind or just tiring at the end of the races turning my feet over just felt a little bit better in the alpha fly 3 compared to the alpha fly 2 which was just about that booming bounce but as i started to scuttle towards the end of races and got a bit tired i'd lose a bit of that bounce from the shoe whereas with the alpha fly 3 you then have that lighter feeling which means it is easier to keep your cadence high and keep turning over while you are still getting a lot of bounce like there's still lots of propulsion and bounce in the shoe obviously you've bit got that big zoom x midsole you've got the air zoom pods the plate and the new continuous midsole roll you onto those pods quickly and efficiently and then you get the punch from them as you run on so really running at any of your kind of race paces feels great so i've gone down like i say to 5k pace in the shoe run a hard 10k and it always just felt really good so the 5k wasn't the best run in the world just a bit dark and icy so we've got a race test fit up on the channel and i you know i felt okay in the shoe but the 10k i ran last night just ran the first half pretty strong in battersea park so dead level mostly running by myself because this wasn't that many runners out at this time of year for a you know a midweek race and the second half like i was tired and i feel like i didn't really have an extra gear but just holding a pace in the alpha fly 3 felt really good i was sticking to 320s i ran a 33 19 in the end and just holding that pace there and not getting any slower as i tired did feel really good in the shoe like i do think though that it is at its best when you are running well and or slightly more in cruise control so the first half of races or more like a marathon pace when you're bounding along in a bit more control is when you get i get the most out of the shoe for sure you get the biggest amount of bounce you get the just the best feeling of almost running effortlessly at that kind of pace and i thought i could hold a pace really well in it but then when i was trying to go to an extra gear in the 10k and the 5k actually and i was really tired and i don't really have a lot of pace in my legs right now i not really had the training for short sharp events like that i feel like I get a little bit less from the shoe because I tend to then increase my cadence quite a lot and my stride's not that long and I don't bound so much and I maybe don't put enough force into the shoe to then get the explosive bounce from it. So at those times that someone like me, like a slightly more shuffly, scuttly runner, might enjoy the Vaporfly a bit more because it is a bit lighter, a bit nimbler, geared to get a bit more from the plate quickly even if you're not putting a big amount of force into the shoe. So with the Alphafly 3, you are, it is still an alpha fly in that regard i think it benefits runners who put a lot of force in the shoe a bit more so people who maybe feel that they weren't getting that from previous models i think we'll still feel that a little bit with the alpha fly 3 it is more aggressive and i think it is easier to engage the plate and get that fast turnover and transition onto your toes which is a bit more vaporfly esque but it is still at its best when you are in running with control and bounding well and just really locking into a pace it will help you hold that all day and then if you start to shuffle a bit <laughs> towards the end it doesn't feel quite as good still feels good obviously still feels as good as anything else out there but you lose maybe some of the bounce from it uh, in that stage this is one of the ones that maybe if you are a bounding runner you enjoy it even more than i do over those short events uh, but i certainly think it's gonna be amazing for running marathons in particular when you are just trying to lock into the pace and hold it the alpha fly 3 just turns over beautifully and really helps you do that so i did do a couple of runs uh, a couple of a b tests with this with the alpha fly 3 on one foot and then i had the alpha fly 2 on the other foot and also i did one with the vapor fly 3 on the other foot so with the alpha fly 2 it, it does feel almost a little bit softer squishier and bouncier i think because it's just such a big shoe like for that but it definitely has doesn't have the connected transition you get from the shoe you can feel the gap in the midsole very noticeably when you run in both shoes at the same time and it just feels like i say like a big bouncing shoe you've got to be on it bounding along to really engage all the foam and plate in that shoe and make the weight not really be an issue and then with the alpha 3 you have got that nimbler feel that lighter feel still plenty of pop but you certainly feel that more fluid tippy forward feeling onto the uh, firmer air zoom pods at the front there and then i ran in the vaporfly 3 at the same time it almost feels like the alpha 3 falls in between the alpha 2 and the vaporfly 3 uh, in the ride feel you have here because it is quite similar to the vaporfly 3 when you're running both at the same time like more similar than i expected you get the firmer feeling under the forefoot with the alpha fly 3 with those pods and that does help i think add a little bit of pop but the vaporfly 3 still feels nimbler and lighter it's a narrower shoe as well i'd say and it's less stable and it feels a little bit more aggressive and racy as a result but do you get a little bit extra bounce out of the alpha fly 3 but certainly a lot of similarities there now i'd say the vapor fly 3 and the alpha fly 3 i think have come a bit closer together in how they feel on the run compared to previous generations but overall certainly a very enjoyable run test i absolutely love using the shoe i can't wait to do some longer races in it as well but everything i've done in it so far it's really impressed like some really hard training sessions that run running down at the track doing those fast reps you know going through k's in like 306 307 uh keeping them under 310 just felt really calm in the shoe and it, when you are running well like locked into your pace just cruising along at race pace there is no shoe that feels as good as this i'm not saying that the shoe is a huge leap forward and all the other options out there but right now it's probably the one that i'd lean towards above all others 
So Verdict is obviously a very positive one. The Nike Alphalite 3 is an absolutely outstanding racing shoe. I think it's probably going to be the best racing shoe for most people out there. And like I say, it's not like if you've got other good racing shoes, you should throw them away and immediately buy the Alpha Fly 3. It's that much better. I think it is the one I'd be leaning towards above all the others. Unless you just don't like carbon plate shoes in general or Nike in general, I can't really think of a reason why you wouldn't like this shoe. It is just so fast, so smooth, so bouncy, just so enjoyable to use. And that's really at any kind of fast running pace. I think it's going to be its best for those longer events where you lock in and it just really helps you tick over. But it's very, very good for shorter events as well. And I think it'll be even better for those events uh, if you're a bounding runner, a more bounding runner than I am. Like I think it's amazing for those short events, but I think some people like it even more than me. It's really hard to say shoes that are going to be as good as this on the market. Like I haven't tested the Adios Pro Evo one, which is obviously the big one from Adidas that's going to be its rival. But looking at it as a non-elite runner, the Alpha 3 A is much more available. It's much cheaper. It's going to be a lot more durable, I imagine, than the Pro Evo one. So it'll be the one I'd pick of those two, having not tested the Adios Pro Evo one. But maybe if you can get hold of that for your one big race, it might be worth giving a go. But hopefully we'll get to test it next year. The Vaporfly 3, I think, is the big competitor because they have come a bit closer together. Like I've got a similar feel, like I say, underfoot. I'd say I'd certainly look at the Alpha 3 probably as the better marathon racing shoe. And then over the shorter distances, it's a bit more of a toss-up. I think, like I say, if you're a bit more of a shuffly runner like me, maybe the Vaporfly 3 will just edge it for those with its slightly more uh, nimble design but you know, the Alphalai 3 is still going to do those really well for sure and I think you are going to get more durability out of the Alphalai 3 compared to the Vaporfly 3. The outsole on the Vaporfly you know, has had problems with wear for lots of runners it's very thin layer of rubber I think you've got a bit more coverage here and it's just a bit harder at the back of the shoe there and I think it's going to hold up uh, a little bit better but you know, both of them, very, very good shoes. Yeah, I really would be very happy in either for any kind of race, really. You know, you're looking around the rest of the market, we've got a few shoes waiting to be updated, things like the new Metaspeed Sky Plus, the new Endorphin Pro 4, you know, all those kind of shoes. It's going to be hard to see, you know, where a shoe does better than this. Like, there's the Saucony Endorphin Elite, which is an incredibly fast shoe. I think it's an amazing shoe, but it is a bit firm and harsh, I found, when running, you know, at fast paces. I think when you start to put a lot of force through the Endorphin Elite, it does feel a bit harsh on the foot at times, but you know, it is still certainly a very good shoe, and that is a very good alternative to the Alphalai 3. But I do think this is a springier, bouncier shoe and a more accommodating one in how it feels on the foot. It is less harsh for sure on those longer runs. Well, we have got lots of new shoes to come from other brands. There's going to be loads of competition out there for sure. But as of now, I think the Alphalai 3 is probably the pick of the bunch, especially for marathon racing. And like I say, really the competitor I have closest to it will be the Vaporfly 3. So Nike is doing very, very well with its carbon plate racing shoes, in my opinion, right now. You know, not Maybe not so well with the rest of its running shoe range, but at the sharp end of things, I think it's hard to beat Nike's racers. And the Alphalai 3 is certainly another outstanding shoe that hits all the key attributes you want from a modern carbon plate racing shoe. I think a lot of people are gonna love it. So yeah, big tick, great shoe. Looking forward to running some longer races in it next year. So that's our review of the Nike Alphalai 3. Let us know what you think in the comments below. We can do some comparison videos. We are hoping that other run testers will get hold of the shoe next year or as soon as possible and we'll start getting some multi-tester opinions on it and doing some more race tests. But for now, uh, just dive into the comments. Let us know what shoes you want it compared to. Please do like, subscribe, ring the little bell and we'll see you next time.